them because they do fun. Oh, don't die on me. Yeah, look at that. What a guy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is a rainy fall day here in North Georgia. And uh, I've been tied up doing some stuff this morning, so I'm only able to get out just now. And I think I'm gonna start this episode with a quick walk around the house and flip the stuff we have here because I haven't done that in a while and see what turns up. So I'm gonna get to it and I will let you guys know how it goes. I didn't see him at first. First chirp of the day. Does not look like there's anybody under here today. This piece has a nice rat snake under it last time we flipped it. That is a different one. Interesting. He just ate something too. The rat snake we found under here last time was a lot more patterned than this guy on his back half especially, but we'll pull him out real quick and get a look at him. The other one was also a lot bigger, but this is a good sized adult rat snake. You can see he's got a big meal in him. We actually had a rat snake hang out under this piece last fall too that, uh, <laughs> Also appeared to have been raiding the rodent burrows underneath, but look at the size of that bolus. That is a big prey item, so we're just going to let him go back under the tin, and hopefully he'll be able to digest that just fine. And maybe we'll even see him again a couple more times before the end of the fall. But first snake of the day, a nice sized gray rat snake that's just eaten something quite big. Alright, back under the tin you go. Look at that bump, that's so ridiculous. All right, let's see what else we can turn up. Nobody in there. There's a nice little slimy salamander. We haven't seen one of these guys in a minute. They tend to get more common as we move into fall and winter here though. And uh, I suspect we'll probably be seeing a ton of them over the next couple weeks as the weather continues to cool off, but Really nice looking little northern slimy salamander. I figured I'd show him real quick, but hanging out under this washing machine lid. <laughs> and a couple pieces down from the last slimy, we have another one, this time sharing his piece with, I think this is the same worm snake we night flipped a while back, but he actually moved to a different piece if it is. But nice slimy salamander and worm snake double flip. Hanging out with a scorpion right there too. We're just going to lower this piece and leave these guys to it. Second snake of the day. All right, next piece. There's another slimy. Way down there on the end. Just went under the leaves. Lots of slimies under stuff today. So if you can't tell, I haven't flipped this piece in a couple months because it's been so overgrown. It's been almost impossible to get to. All right. Ah, oh, dang, it's still looking good, but nobody today. Oh, what was that? It's a spotted salamander. <laughs> I don't know how well you'll be able to see him on the video, but big spotted salamander just slurped down that hole. Well. The giant female spotted salamander wasn't on the list of things I was expecting to flip today. <laughs> that is very cool. As you can see, she is huge and fat and healthy. That is really awesome to see. I don't know how well it's going to come out on the video, but when I flipped the tin, she was just barely sticking out of a hole and she slurped down it pretty fast. But, come here. But yeah. Always cool to see these guys this time of year. Outside of their breeding season, they're actually a fairly tough thing to find. But once we start getting into the winter months, I'm sure we will be seeing tons of these guys. So I'm not going to spend too much time with her. We're going to put her back in her burrow and uh, get back to flipping. We're kind of running out of stuff to flip, though, so this might end up being the last thing we see today. All right, there you go. 
back into her little system of burrows. <laughs> That's so cool. This is the first time this stack is produced and it's got two ring necks today at the second to bottom layer. Really cool. It's ending up being a pretty solid day of flipping out here, so I'm gonna move these two guys and flip the bottom layer real quick. All right, coming up on our last couple of flips for the day. This stuff has yet to produce anything for me, so. Oh, nice. That's my first snake under this tin. Nice black racer. That is a really good sign that I put this tin in a decent spot. I'd yet to find anything under it since I set it out roughly around a year ago at this point. So I was starting to get a little bit worried that maybe I put it in a bad spot. But racers are generally a pretty good indication that your tin, okay. <laughs> They're generally a decent indication that your tin is placed in a good spot to get big snakes under it like kings, rats and racers so any tin that i can flip a decent sized snake under is a good thing so this guy is deep in shed though so we're not gonna mess with him too much i'm gonna get a couple quick shots and then we'll put him back under his piece but nice black racer is our next snake of the day all right dude good luck <laughs> i think he's just gonna crawl off that way that's fine he'll figure it out all right this is our last flip for the day so we'll see if there's anybody hanging out doesn't look like it. All right, well, that's gonna be it for the first part of this video. I'm going to run inside and shower and get these ticks off of me. And I will see you guys next time I get out in the field, which will hopefully be tomorrow. Good afternoon, everybody. It has been, I think, a day since I last saw you guys. We went flipping at the house yesterday and we ended up seeing relatively decent numbers of snakes, but nothing crazy. So I'm out here the next day hitting an area with Yachten in Metro Atlanta. Really hoping to find some sort of snakes out here. Uh, this is an area I've never looked for snakes, but it does look really good as you can see. Nice and open and rocky. And should be a fantastic place to turn up several of my favorite species. So we're gonna get after it. It's not the best time of year to be flipping rocks, but we're gonna do some rock flipping and habitat hiking and see what we can turn up. So I'll keep you guys posted on how this goes. So the big thing I'm hoping to eventually find in this area is an Eastern milk snake. Um, here in the Georgia Piedmont, milks are basically unheard of, but this region is one of the few places I know of them coming from in the Piedmont. And uh, this is pretty typical looking milk snake habitat for North Georgia, even though we are in the Piedmont rather than the Blue Ridge. So I think there's a very real possibility that they're here. So I'm gonna flip some rocks. Uh, Yachten's over there also flipping rocks. So we've got a couple of eyes out here. There's some deer down there, but uh, yeah, we're gonna be hitting this habitat pretty hard for the rest of the day. Well guys, the first spot of the day did not pan out at all. We spent hours out there and didn't see anything. So we moved to a different area. And this is an area I have actually found quite a few snakes in. So we're gonna flip some rocks out here and see how we do. <laughs> Yachten just saved the day. Man, there I'm is Eastern Hognose right there. We were actually about to get goose egged on snakes today. So it is a very good thing Yachten spotted this guy. That is really cool. The first adult Eastern hognose we've seen in the Georgia Piedmont this year. This guy is hissing for us. Look at those light lip scales. Super interesting looking hog. Very different from anything I've ever seen in Georgia. That is not what I was expecting to see as our first snake of the day, honestly. That is crazy. I mean, we've been flipping rocks for hours and haven't seen so much as a ring neck. I was basically counting on making today just a spider video because you guys are going to see the Joro spider we found today in a separate video. Um, I was kind of worried that the herping vlog was going to be a bust today. So I haven't even been showing like the salamanders and stuff we've been finding because I wasn't counting on finding anything to make this worth putting in a video. And then Yachten spots this guy. Very cool looking adult eastern hognose snake. This guy is hissing really good. He's flattening out for us really pretty face on this guy look at that cool little stretch of white scales along his lip october is going much better than it usually does in north georgia <laughs> like i i always hope to see hog noses in october in north georgia mm -hmm. and then i find a lot of them down in south georgia this time of year but it doesn't really seem to work as well up here they seem to be a little bit more spring active in the northern half of the state 
Um, I have much better luck with them in March and April for the most part. That is the fifth, I think, Eastern hog I've seen in Georgia this year, the rest of which were all last week. <laughs> so that is the fifth um, Georgia Eastern hog for the year, and I think the fourth one in the Piedmont, which is really cool. Or no, the third in the Piedmont. So three in the Piedmont, two in South Georgia. Right, holding them because they do fun. Oh, don't die on me. Yeah, yeah, look at that. What a guy. Well, unfortunately, this has been the first hog of the year to actually play dramatically dead on us. You can see there's little evidence that this snake is, <laughs> is even alive right now other than the subtle motion. But uh, he is, in fact, only feigning death, as these guys are known to do. So we're just going to put him somewhere safe where a predator is not going to mess with him and let him come back to life on his own. But that definitely makes the day for us. We've been at it really hard for the last couple hours with literally nothing to show for it but this guy so far. So that was really cool. Hello, everyone. I am back home, and there's a rabbit. Anyways, I'm headed out to walk around and try to wrap this video up, actually. I want to go see if there's any salamanders out. And uh, it's nice and wet, but it's also cool. It should be a good night for the first marbled salamander migration of the year, potentially. I know they've definitely been moving already, I just haven't gotten a chance to get out and look for them. So I'm going to do that now, and hopefully we'll be able to at least turn up a few things to wrap this video up. Well, it's not a snake, but it is weird. There's a little snail party going on right here. They're all uh, congregating around what appears to be some sort of dead uh, mass of meat, and I think they are eating it. So really interesting. <laughs> um, these little salamander walks aren't always uh, just about the salamanders. It's always cool to see weird stuff like this. Watching snails come together to eat goop off of my driveway is, uh, well, it's fascinating to say the least, even though I don't really know exactly what's going on here or really anything about snails. It's always interesting to watch. For example, look at that. You can see his mouth going. I'm not sure, I mean... I've seen a lot of snails in my day, but I think this is the first time I've ever seen them eating something. I mean, how often can you say you've seen a snail eating? Or, much less, three snails coming together to eat an unidentified glop of maybe even other snail. Honestly, it kind of looks like a smushed snail that these guys are feasting on. I don't know. Uh, it's definitely kind of weird, definitely something that I've never seen before. I'm just gonna leave these guys to it and go see if I can turn up a salamander, but really interesting and odd find to kick off the night. So rainy fall days like this mark the beginning of the fall and winter amphibian season here in Georgia. And uh, the first species to breed is usually the marbled salamanders, so that's what I'm kind of hoping slash expecting to see tonight. Um, they're a fairly abundant salamander throughout a lot of their range, especially here in Georgia, so it shouldn't be too much to ask to see a couple tonight. Um, seems like a pretty good night weather-wise, too, so I'm going to keep walking, and if I turn one up, I'll let you guys know. All right, right in time for the rain to start picking up. Here is our first salamander of the night. This is a little four-toed salamander. I'm going to have to keep footage and narration pretty brief because of how heavy it's about to start raining, but there is our first salamander of the night, a four-toed salamander, which is a pretty common species around here. However, they are thought to be pretty uncommon throughout their range because they have a pretty specific set of habitat requirements. But really cool little salamanders. This one is not an adult. It is a yearling or so. They get quite a bit bigger than that as full-grown adults, up to around two or three inches total length. I'd say this guy's only around an inch long. There's a stick bug. Just having a really hard time with the rain. What's up, dude? I'll help you across the road real quick, I suppose. And salamander number two hanging out right here by my neighbor's trash can is yet another little four-toed salamander. These guys are often one of the more abundant salamanders we see in this area, so not too surprising to start off with two of these guys. Uh, they'll probably only get more common as we move into the winter months, too. So I'm just going to escort this guy across the road. And right after the last four-toed, we have a nice newt. 
This guy is likely transitioning between his F stage and his adult life stage where they become fully aquatic once again to reproduce. The reason I say this is he is starting to lose his vibrant F coloration and is starting to transition into that more dull kind of olive green and orange color. What the hell is going on over there? Somebody's moving around. Anyways, I'm trying to look at an F to your monster off. Anyways, back to this guy. We're just gonna escort him across the road though. This is another species I'm sure we will see plenty more of over the next couple of months. One interesting note about these guys is you can kind of see just through the phone, uh, they actually have a pretty rough texture to them unlike a lot of the other salamanders we have in this area. All newts are salamanders, but not all salamanders are newts. It's one of those type deals. So I'm just gonna move this guy out of the road and get back to it. Well, as you told me, our first ambistomid of the night was going to be a spotted salamander rather than a marbled. I probably would have called you crazy, but there we go. Nice little yearling, or I guess six month or so old, spotted salamander. This guy looks kind of silly. He hasn't really grown into his proportions yet. As you can see, his tail's really short and stubby, and he's got a big old head on him. But nice little metamorph spotted salamander is our first ambistomid of the night. So I can't really tell from back here, but I think that little green speck right there probably doesn't look like much at all from this distance. I think that's a green snake. So I'm gonna go over there and double check and see if I'm correct. But that would be really cool if it is. A little closer now, that is definitely a rough green snake. Quality is terrible since it's nighttime and I'm so far away. But as we get closer, you'll definitely be able to get a good look at him. A Little bit closer yet again. You can kind of see that it's a snake from this angle. All right, let's see if I can get over to this guy without completely soaking myself. Look at that. Very nice. Awesome. Rough green snake. Was not expecting to see any more snakes today, but sure enough, there we go. I am actually not going to disturb this guy. Just going to leave him sitting right there because that is a really cool in C2. So first snake of the night, probably the only snake of the night. I really doubt we're going to see anything else unless we see another one of these guys. So I'm just going to leave him chilling right there. Nice rough green snake. Oh, turns out that green snake isn't going to be the only snake of the night because here's a brown snake just crawling around in the rain. Very nice. All right, we got a car coming, so let's get this guy out of the road. But second snake of the night, much to my surprise, nice little brown snake. It probably goes without saying, seeing as I found two snakes in a row between salamanders. Um, <laughs> the salamanders aren't out in the numbers I was quite expecting them to be tonight, interestingly. So I'm going to keep at it a little bit longer and see if we can get a marbled, but it might end up being kind of slow night on the salamander front. But I'm always happy with finding snakes too, as you guys know, so I can't really complain about that. Normally our salamander meanderings don't produce any snakes. So finding two of them in one is quite the task. Uh, typically, we do these later in the winter, just keeping an eye out for some more green snakes. Uh, so normally it's a quite a bit cooler than it is tonight, but uh, it isn't unusual to see DOR snakes while I'm out walking around in the winter. So hopefully one of these days we'll be out in December or January looking for salamanders on this road and actually stumble upon some snakes then. Yeah, kind of unusual to actually find snakes while out looking for salamanders. I always know it's possible, but seldom does it actually seem to happen. There is a single spring peeper calling out there. I don't know if he'll keep calling while I'm recording or not, but here is our next salamander of the night. A nice, handsome little northern slimy salamander. What you looking up for, bud? Typically, these guys make more of an appearance this time of year than in the winter, but they are pretty active in the winter as well. But very nice. A little slimy salamander. I'm going to see if I can poke him on the tail here and get him to get moving. Go on. Woo! Keep going that way. Off the road. All right, I'm going to finish up this pass, but uh, it's starting to look like we just might not see any marbled salamanders tonight, which is, I mean, it's quite an epic fail considering they're usually the most abundant salamander on this road. For uh, a good portion of the year, even during the summer, you see tons of metamorphs. 
basically anytime it rains you'll see small ones and then you get the big breeding migrations this time of year but i think it might just be a little bit too early and a little bit too warm generally the ambistomid movements are triggered by nights in the say mid 40s to mid to high 50s and it's currently 70 degrees out here still so i'm assuming that's probably why we're not seeing more than we are but hey two snakes on this little walkabout not bad i do think i got enough to wrap up the video but i'm going to continue for that peeper he's going off but yeah i'm going to finish this pass up i think this is a worm not a snake yep that's a big worm that's actually a flat worm these are a uh, non-native planarian from, I believe, somewhere in Asia. I don't know too much about them, but I do know that they're supposedly not a good species to have around. They're actually pretty detrimental, invasive. Something to do with their relationship with earthworms, I believe. Um, but if anyone has any more knowledge about that than I do, feel free to put some info in the comments and I'll ping it. But really interesting species. They get quite large and they're, uh, they're absolutely everywhere. We flip them under stuff all the time, and every once in a while you'll actually see one out and about doing its thing. Really alien looking though. There's another little four-toed salamander. Somehow these ended up being the most common salamander of the night in mid-October. And you would think that would usually belong to the marbled salamander, but not tonight I guess. Also, it's kind of impressive how fast this guy got across the road, because I'm all the way over here, he's going this direction. And uh, this little stretch of road that I walk is probably only maybe a half a mile long, so this salamander managed to cross most of the way across the road in the time that it's taken me to walk down here from the point I turn around at, which is no more than half a mile, probably less than a quarter of a mile away. So I'm going to help him finish his journey just in case someone comes along before he can make it across. And we're going to finish up this pass. A frog. Somehow our first frog of the night. Whoa. Come here. Come here. Come here. He absolutely did not agree to my terms. I told him to come here and he just disappeared. Incredible. All right. Well, that was the only frog of the night so far, which is weird. A uh, southern leopard frog. Did not see anything after I think that leopard frog was the last thing I showed you that <laughs> disappeared. So we ended the night with our only frog, which is really strange. I don't know why there wasn't more out. But anyways, I'm going to call it a day here and probably wrap this video up. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next episode of the 2021 Herping Vlog.